my friends it's been a little while but we're right back at it with another chris chan letter now this was another one sent to that eels and eggman dude and this was sent on june 27th 2022 as you can see up in the top corner now this is a short ass letter but i do have something special for y'all after we're done it so stick around for that because it's just more letter nonsense but we're gonna just start the letter straight up hey blank this will be a short letter in response to your just received letter. I think I've said the word letter about 20 times in the past minute, but let's move on. Chris says in all capital letters, to stress this shit, nobody's addresses or names will ever be revealed publicly nor doxed at all. Well, okay, so once again, people must be writing Chris saying, you know, hey, Chris, I've written you, and all I've heard from people online is that once you get out, you're going to post all this shit in your goddess log, which is Chris's book he's coming out with that he said he's going to drop once he gets out of jail. Now, Chris is saying here, which he said in the past few letters, that no, if you've written him before, he's going to remove your name and your address before he writes it. Now, obviously, I think at this point, Chris is telling the truth. He's not going to dox these people. You know, you never know with Chris, but I really think he's telling the truth about it. But at the same time, you never know. He could get out, be filled with piss and vinegar, and someone who wrote something in a letter that he didn't like, he might go on a tirade on YouTube or wherever the fuck going, hey, you, remember this letter you sent me so-and-so? Like, so that type of shit I'd be worried about if I'm someone writing Chris just fucking with him. But no, I don't think if you're just writing Chris normal correspondence that he's going to dox you on purpose. But who, like I said before, who knows? It's Chris. He, he, you can't really trust him, but I'll take his word for it here, and I don't think that's the plan he's going with that's what i'll say do i think he might end up doing it fuck i don't know it's chris but i really think his plan is that he's not gonna write everyone's names in that goddess log Chris then says, your OCs are okay. And he says that because the guy who wrote him, Eels and Eggman, uh, I guess him and a, a partner of his who draws like shit, they were asking Chris, like, hey, Chris, you know, uh, we don't, we've heard that you said that you don't want anybody drawing Sonichu shit, and all of it is not canon, and it's wrong. So I guess this is just him asking Chris, hey, can I keep drawing Sonichu, because they're doing their own Sonichu type thing. And that's okay with Chris, I guess. That's just because he's cool with these people, I assume. But yeah, so Chris is Chris is down with some Sonichu shit, but not all of it. So don't get don't get too ahead of yourselves, guys. Don't think you can just start drawing Sonichu and it be okay. All right, that's Chris's legal property. Don't fuck around with that. Chris says that he was never attracted to Bella. Period. Other than to be just friends until after confirmed betrayal. So, I don't know where that came from, where this guy was asking, was Chris ever attracted to Bella? But Chris then says, Bella's never gonna be called in. The talk topics were simply on light and brain-bending topics with some checkers and chess. Bella and Barbara had never talked at all. She never attempted to sway me to deviating fetishes at all. Okay, so now Chris is saying, you know, Bella's not going to be called in if there's like a, a if there's like a trial for this. Bella's not going to be a witness. Why you ask? Because Chris was just bending her fucking brain with what he was saying, you know? He was just trying to prove that she would betray him. That's why, he, that's what he's saying now, you know? All the shit he said on that phone call about what he did to his mom, that's all just bullshit to make sure that Bella was a troll. And because she put that out there and Chris is in jail right now, that proves that Bella was exactly what Chris thought she was. You know, isn't that fucking confusing, right? But that's why, that's Chris's reasoning on why she won't get called in on the trial. But I'll tell you guys, she won't get called in on the trial at all, because if there is something about about this i mean may, she would be like the number one who you would think would get called in but i don't know I, I, I just don't think they'll find wherever the fuck bella is and extradite her to is that the right word to get her to basically get her to virginia to testify for this shit but then when he talks about like deviating fetishes i assume that's just him saying like yeah no guys she never like pushed me into doing the stuff with barb just because they never did anything that's what chris is going off of now like i said it, it these letters have changed rapidly. In the beginning, Chris was saying, you know, he did it and it was all well and good and he's going to go back to the house and do it some more. But now it's turned into, you know, I've never done it and I never will do it. And all the shit I said was just a big test. But I think you're going to find out in the next uh, little bit of writing that Chris's lawyer might be the one trying to like tell him, hey, everything's going to be all right. And why Chris thinks this is just a non-issue now. Heilberg who is Chris's lawyer, if you didn't know, had confirmed my return home on valid terms. Plus, my return slash second coming had been foretold long ago with the scriptures. 
So at first, you know, the when you look at the second coming shit, it's just more of Chris's weirdo talk. But then you look at what he says up top. So his lawyer has confirmed to him that he will be returning back home. Now, I don't know if that's the lawyer just kind of like kid talking Chris, being like, yeah, yeah, don't worry, we're going to get you out of here, get you home in no time. Or if he's genuinely said like, yeah, we're going to get you out of here, get you back to 14 Branch Lane Court, you know, just do whatever. So like... It looks like Chris, if he does get out, will be going back to the house. Now, it's not too shocking. I mean, it is his house, but a lot of people had said, are they going to put him right back in the house with Barbara? Well, it looks like Barbara's not even there anymore, basically from all these pictures you've been seeing on the Kiwi farms and shit. The house is cleared out. There's no trash cans outside or nothing. It's just, there's nothing really there. And, um... It's weird. It's weird. I don't know what'll happen when Chris gets out, but he's saying that his lawyer has said that he'll be returning home on valid terms. So whatever that means, Chris most likely is going to end up back in uh, back in 14 Branch Lane Court, but we'll see what happens, you know? I wonder how his neighbors are going to feel about that, because they sure as shit know what happened, and just seeing Chris and his pony stuff just w waltzing back into the house, they're probably like, what the fuck? I mean, it's not like they've never seen this dude do creepy shit before, but now, now it's, it's like a new level but then chris uh ends this by saying barbara was never questioned due to her age and failing mentality he says falling mentality but i think he means failing mentality so fuck barbara was never even questioned or at least that's what chris is saying and this goes off of what chris has been saying in the past few letters that you know barbara's not even competent to think anything he, this is like chris is officially turned on his mom he's at the point now where he's saying like you know she can't possibly say that i did anything to her because she's too fucking old she's too fucking crazy she don't know shit she can't she can't uh think for herself you know this is chris saying like or this is chris realizing that he has an out he has a way to figure out and try to tell people, you know, hey, you know, you can't believe her, even though I said that I did this, because her egg is just fucking scrambled, apparently. And, um, yeah, so that's where we're going from here. And I wouldn't be shocked if it's his lawyer giving him that advice, because it's, you know, a lawyer's got to do what he's got to do. But Chris says, that's all for now. Be safe and well. Miss Christine, Christine Chan, you know the fucking shit. And then Chris writes, I love this. I love this so much. Commodore as in the Commodore 64, and then on the other side, come a door. So, so that, that's Chris's new, that's going to be like the slogan on the top of the church of Christian is Commodore, come a door. And when he said, I love how it's always, you know, with God, with God, God, Zeke, he's there for the people, you know, God's supposed to, you know, you're supposed to worship in him. And that's what Chris sees. He wants you to come adore him. This dude's fucking nuts. Like, every one of these I read, I've always said the same thing. This guy's, uh, Chris is, Chris is a bit wacky. But, you know, usually I'd end it there at the end of the letter, but there's something from about a week ago that I completely forgot about, because I haven't been, I haven't been around, guys, I gotta be honest. Shit's, shit's been still getting pretty bad, uh, but we're trying to get back in this. Don't know when I'm gonna be able to fully get back in this, but something I missed is a summary of one of Chris's letters from about like a week or two ago, and something he says in it is so fucking interesting. Now, a lot of you guys have been asking me, you know, uh, how do we know these letter summaries? How do we know they're not fake? Well, the reason I always say that I give him the benefit of the doubt is because the guy who got this letter right here that we know is from Chris, because all the fucking penmanship, it all lines up, is the same guy who's been writing the summaries for these letters that Chris has been saying, hey, don't fucking put out. And also a lot of people have been saying, you know, well, why don't you just do it why don't you do it against chris's wishes and you know i agree with you so i don't know why these fucking people just agree with whatever chris says but at the same time i can see if they do like release one of these letters there's going to be some white knight who writes chris and is like hey chris don't you dare write this person again you went against what you said so like in that sense i i guess but there's a letter summary and in it chris says something that really caught me off guard so let's look into this so I'm not going to go into everything like I did with the actual letter because this is a summary. So I'm just going to read it off. But the real interesting things at the very bottom. Um, but like I said, I'll, I'll give you the whole gist of this before we get there. So um, this is another one written up by Eels and Eggman. And Chris and they say that Chris says, so Chris writes to Helena and I, uh, really just her about his usual I'm Jesus bullshit. But here are a few interesting points. He asks that letters be sent to the Sonichu Temple at Branch Lane Court. He is so certain he's going home within a matter of days slash weeks. He's been certain of that for months now uh claims that his soul is home but not his body 
Well, that's, I feel like his soul's been there since he left. It's just kind of wandering around his room, just waiting to pick up a toy again. Every time that soul tries to grab a toy, his hand just goes right through it, and he thinks, fuck, I need to be back here. But Chris expresses paranoia that the prison guards are messing with his letters and tampering with his mail. Chris also doesn't want me, Helena, and others to potentially waste time, money, and energy with letters being returned to us, since he believes by the time any letters get sent to him, which usually takes about two weeks, uh, he'll, pro he'll probably be out at that point. So don't send any letters back. Don't do any of that shit. You know, it's start to write to the house, because that's where Chris is going to be. Don't start writing to the house, guys, because we don't even know if Chris is going back there. I know I just talked in the actual letter about how that's most likely where Chris is going, but until he steps foot in that house, house, you know, nothing is solid. But the weird thing is, Chris really believes that the prison guards and all them are against him, and that's such a fucking Chandler mentality. That's his dad thinking right there, because his dad always thought everyone was fucking out to get him. And now, with Chris, with these people who have power over him, no shit, Chris. There's no fucking, like, he absolutely thinks that. I am 100% certain of that. And I'm surprised it's taken this long for him to get to that point. But yeah, so that's that's why. Chris probably believes that troll letters getting in are the fucking prison guards just fucking with him. Or, or whatever. I don't know what it is, but that's just... that's that. You can believe that right when you hear it. Mentions new lore about something called Neo Lives... They're assuming this is our perfect self, say after the dimensional merge. That's probably exactly what that is. Tries to introduce Helena to someone called Val. They have some, time, some type of connection to Magichan. Helena thinks Val is Val from the Watchmen. Uh, the Watchmen were the group that helped Chris back in the day, like most time, mostly around the idea guy shit. Um, so I don't know where that comes from. But Chris, this is the one. This is what I wanted to get to. This is... This, uh... So we just talked about, like, what Chris gets from his dad. You know, he gets that paranoia about, like, people thinking everyone's out to get him. And you know that Chris, um... <laughs> Chris uh, likes to indulge in what his father indulged in when it comes to, you know, sexual activities with, with a specific sexual partner, if you know what I'm saying. But Chris cosplays as his father, Robert Chu, and speaks about Val and Caden should meet Helena and collaborate some sort of project with a bunch of motivational you're a winner, believe in yourselves and your powers bullshit, and also includes a drawing of his father, the internet lumberjack Young, as a sonichu with a third eye vouching for Val. What? So now Chris is pretending that he is Bob. And the reason I wanted to bring this up is if he's doing this now, I guarantee you, I fucking guarantee you that he's thought about this for a while. And it's this really, really fucking weird, creepy thought that, you know, was he, was he doing this when he was doing Barb? Like, so it's, I don't know, man, like, just hearing that he's in this position now, like, he was Jesus for a while, then he liked to cosplay as Sonichu for a while, now he's cosplaying as his dad in Sonichu form, it's, so, uh, I get blown away by this every time, I don't get what the whole, like, fascination is with this person, Val, I assume maybe they wrote him, I, I, I don't know, I don't know nothing about that, but Chris is now all obsessed with this person, there's a Caden involved now, I don't know who the fuck Caden is, but he's there too, um, but yeah, Robert Chu, um, that's, that's what Chris, and maybe, maybe, you know, maybe I'm thinking too much into it, maybe Chris was just doing that for this specific, uh, instance, but I don't know, man, he likes to cosplay as Sonichu all the time, he pretended he was Sonichu for over two fucking years, uh, like, on Twitter and shit, before he went to jail, it was always like, oh, it's not Chris, it's Sonichu, um, maybe it wasn't two years, maybe it was, like, a year, but it was a long fucking time where he was like, nope, it ain't Chris here, this is Sonichu, so I could really obviously see him doing the same shit with the old Robert Chu with fucking sonichu version of his dad so you know what a this this what a weirdo we talk about this all the time chris is just one of the strangest fuckers on earth and um you know maybe he will be getting out because ladies and gentlemen we are only a few short weeks away from the one year anniversary of chris being in jail so, you know, shit's gonna, and we're only a few weeks away from the next trial date, holy shit, when, I remember when we found out it was gonna be months and months away, we were all stunned, but now it's getting here, and expect a lot more videos coming out, as long as I can do, figure out all my loose ends, I, I'm gonna have all that shit here for y'all, so I hope you guys, uh, enjoyed this video, because this was a fucking wacky one, and you know I'll have more shit out here for you eventually. 
But first, I want to give shouts out to the Ghostbuster fan, Cody Hale, Liz Vender, Sky, Your Mom, Krabby, Vanessa, Club Doom, Worman, Bjornsson, Holly, all y'all, thank you for, uh, just all y'all who got to this end of the video, thank you too. Shouts out to you guys for being a GOAT as well. And the final shouts out just gonna go to the homeboy Kiwi Tapes, who, uh, he, he commentated for me on old Lol Cow Mania last week. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. It's my most recent video. He makes awesome content on, like, King Cobra and Cyrax, so check his shit out. He'll be in the link in the description below. And yeah, guys, thank you to all y'all for getting to this point, you know. Um, I know it takes a lot to listen to all of this Chris rambling and listening to me talk about Chris's rambling because I I mean shit it's, it's it's just lunacy it's just talking about one dude going nuts inside his jail cell so I don't I don't blame you for clicking off these videos ever but if you got to this point thank you and I hope you guys have a great rest of your weekend it's Saturday so chill the fuck out go out tonight if you ain't going out tonight chill in order some dinner you know spark one up just have a great time and um yeah guys I hope you I hope I see y'all in the next one and take care